everybody, this is my solar electric camper van. It's based off of a 2010 Navistar International, Navistar e International. It is completely electric and I've turned it into my home and I also charge it off of solar power, um, which, is, which I've designed to be an off-grid charging system on the roof of the van. So if you want to follow me inside, I'm going to show you what it, is, what it looks like to live inside of one of these vehicles. So as you walk in the door, the first thing you'll notice is my beautiful guitar, which I get to design and which I get to play for everybody who I meet on the road. Uh, most travelers really enjoy having guitar at the, the campfire and having someone play some music for them. Um, up here, you'll see our lovely map. This is where we begin, right up here in the Arctic Circle, up in Alaska. Um, we didn't quite make it to Dead Horse, which is our plan, but it didn't end up happening. So we've traveled the whole way down the West Coast, all the way down here. And right now we're in Ensenada, Ensenada, Baja, California. Um, the first thing you'll notice is this big room in the van. And basically this is our shower toilet combination. It's got my wetsuit hanging up there because it's a nice wet area where I can have all of these um, sorts of clothes and stuff. There's a few storage units inside of here and also a toilet down the bottom there if you want to have a look at that. Uh, has an exhaust fan which leads to outside and a dimmable DC switch light with an LED light inside of that. If you follow me through you can see our full-sized kitchen. Uh, it's got a large area for cooking and cutting and cleaning on. Everything's electric. Basically you can plug all of any electrical appliance you want into this. Um, you can have a cooktop, you can have a popcorn maker, you can have a kettle, you can have whatever you want. Um, there's enough power in this van to run anything electric. So there's zero gas, zero fossil fuels used for even cooking in the van. A uh, big range hood up here with a three speed fan to send exhaust outside while you're cooking. So your van doesn't fill up with smoke while you're cooking and, and eating and cleaning. And a little light there too. Um, there's a few carbon filters up in here too, so we're not spewing carbon dioxide out into the atmosphere. Um, the carbon gets to gets absorbed by the filters. Up here is our clean water drinking system. Basically, we picked up this canister from Walmart um, for three or four dollars. And if you want a drink of water, you grab a cup, a mug, and away you go. And it's fresh drinking water in any part of the world. Mmm, delicious. So we have an electric hot water system. Basically, it's hot straight off of the tap. It's very luxurious in a van to have running hot water and also just a cold water spigot here. And you could make that mixture up yourself if you wanted some warm water or whatever. Um, and some nice racks and cooking utensils where I keep all my knives. The biggest touch I like about the kitchen are my Dia del Muerte tiles, which we got from the tile store here in Mexico. It's really good. And if you come through here, you can see all of our spices that we use to cook and clean and uh, cups and mugs and anything like that. This is just a little rack where we can, where we keep just stuff, um, medicine, some multivitamins, Whoop, a solar powered car that we use to, dis to describe what our van does to uh, people who are wondering how it all works. Um, and then plenty of storage up here. We have a slide out um storage system for all of our goodies that we want to cook with and clean with and you can reach right into the back there if you're tall enough to reach and see um, it's it's delightful it's a good way to go as well as a beautiful full-size kitchen we have a full-size 90 liter fridge and this is one of my favorite things in the van because it fits all of the beer in it and some vegetables you have to stay green sometimes um, so basically plenty of room. It's got a little LED light here that turns on. So at nighttime, you don't have to turn all the lights on when you want to get a little snack at the middle of the night. Um, so huge deep fridge, it's on wheels. The wheels roll away like this. And then I have a little hook here that comes over and holds the fridge in place when we're traveling and it doesn't go anywhere. And then looking back, through to the rest of the van, I have a huge 
king side bed with two windows. Basically, these windows open up um, so you can have a fly screen. If you feel like having a fly screen to let all the air run and flow through. And if you want to open it up completely, we have these two emergency hatches and the window opens up like this. It's kind of like an ice cream window. And then obviously we have these felt curtains for privacy that we can pull shut at night time so that nobody can peer in. Now these windows are completely uh, tinted. Nobody can see in from the outside, but we can see out from inside um, just for another added level of privacy. Up here, we have our storage cabinets where we keep all of our food. I have a popcorn addiction. So we have a huge jar full of popcorn and we're running low on rice, as you can see, and probably need to get some more coffee at the same time. But basically, this is what we have for storage and there's three units. Um, don't look too much into there because it's all just crap that I shouldn't have because I live in a van. And the same with this side, it's all just crap that I have because I live in a van. Um, a wok, a uh, pot and a pan and a camera that apparently lives up there now and like I said a big double open queen size bed so you can stretch out at night time when you're not sleeping with your co-pilot key in, in the bed and then up the back here the last thing you'll notice is a um, an individual book rack don't judge me, I like to read books about philosophy and spirituality. <laughs> and on Keegan's side, he has stuff about um, without plastic and just a few knickknacks. Mine's a little bit more full because I like to read a little bit more than he does apparently. And then up here is a safe place to keep your laptop at night time when you're sleeping and maybe a notebook or so, just something to have a little bit more handy when you use it. All the LED lights are puck lights. Um, they're 12 volt puck lights and they're dimmable so I can bring them down and up as needed and turn them off and on as needed. And that's basically the bed area. All right, moving onwards, we have our broom closet. Um, pretty self-explanatory, it's where you keep the broom. I like to sweep at least once or twice a day. Like I said, to keep the sand out, I don't really like sand in my vehicle. Up in Alaska, this came a little bit more in handy. This is an ice scraper. We don't really need to use this down in the desert, but up in Alaska, we needed the ice scraper because we kept getting caught in snowstorms. Note to everybody watching, if you're building your own solar powered electric camper van, don't get stuck in a snowstorm. You won't be able to move. Uh, big exhaust fan in here for the electrical cabinet, which I'm going to show you in a second, but the exhaust fan gets turned on here. Um, it's enough air to pull out for our electronics in the electronics cabinet to not get too overheated. Now, this is the brain of the vehicle. It's the magic area. Um, usually it's screaming because it's making so much electricity that we don't know what to do with it. Uh, but today we're fully charged, as you can see by our battery monitoring system. And we're only pulling in 200 watts on the uh, charge controller here. So we have two charge controllers because we have two off-grid charging systems and it just helps to divide and even out the power and bring them into the batteries at a little bit more of a safer level. So these are two Flexmax 80 Outback charge controllers. Um, they're really good units. They handle a lot of energy very easily. Um, moving on to below this, we have our eight kilowatt uh, inverter. This inverts all of our DC energy to AC energy. And remember when we were showing you the kitchen, how I said you could plug anything you want. And the reason we also have on-demand hot water, hot water, hot electric hot water, is because of this huge piece of beautiful equipment. Um, it's never failed us, it works perfectly. It's a really good thing. For safety reasons, we have a huge cutoff switch down here. That's in a uh, 250 amp breaker. And basically if a fire or anything occurred, I would grab my um, my fire extinguisher down there and I would also flip that off and hopefully head for the hills so that I don't catch on fire. But everything's pretty safe. Um, we have breaker boxes and fail safe switches. Up here we have the battery monitoring system. This is our charge hub. Basically I can control energy coming in 
through the charge controllers to my inverter. I can charge any, I can control energy coming out. I can change the voltages to suit the application. Energy comes from, from the inverter through there to our AC panel. This is our AC combiner box. And basically we have all of our labeled systems here. We have a 40 amp kitchen, a 40 amp juice box, which is our electric vehicle charger. And we have all of our bed outlets and um, front cabinet, uh, 110 volt electrical outlets and all that sort of stuff too. And moving onwards, well, we also have our ports for charging all of our um, camera batteries. Um, we have our Canon charging system and our Sony charging systems down there. And we also have a drone that has its own charging battery. And I have a one wheel that I also charge using this whole system as well. And below down here, you can see a 12 volt and a 24 volt um, step up, step down. Our battery, secondary battery system is 48 volts and I step up and step down from 12 to 48 volts as necessary um, using these step down, step ups. And that's how I run all of my lights and all of my 12 volt appliances and needs. Um, I have a few winches on the outside of the vehicle too that I run their 12 volts as well. Everybody, now another favorite part of my vehicle is the cockpit or the sunroom, depending on whether you're driving or you're parked. If you're parked, it's a sunroom and if you're driving, obviously it's cockpit. Every spaceship needs a cockpit, so if you want to follow me through, and I'll explain to you what happens up the front here. So, immediately as you walk in, you'll notice that there's a huge panoramic windshield that lets you take some really good photos and videos while you're driving. Up higher, we have all of our storage overhead bulkhead system, um, blankets, towels, clothes on this side, and just some other work clothes. The captain's hat, which is very important to wear, when you are ready to drive. And you can't forget the most important thing, and that is grandma and granddad's photo, which you have to keep while you're driving to keep you safe and make sure that I mention them in every video. Love you, grandma. This is the cockpit. This is where we drive the vehicle. Um, there's a sensor in the seat. If you stand up, the van will turn off. And if you sit down firmly, the van will stay on. Uh, you need to put your foot on the brake to start it. When you start it, it's all good to go. And then it drives just like any other automatic vehicle um, in that you put your foot on the accelerator and you go and you put on your foot on the brake to stop. Indicators, windshield wipers and all that sort of stuff. The display is a large, I think like seven inch display. Basically it shows you your battery status indicator and your speed. And it also has the odometer on there as well. And I think that's about it. We have a fan during the summer to push all hot air around in here. We want to get it out as much as possible so to ventilate this system. Um, our sun visors are sort of screens that come up and down. Um, there's one, two, three of them like this. And we have also a reverse camera here where um, we can see the backing up of the, the camera. Basically, we have mirrors everywhere. These mirrors help to see the front of the van while you're driving. And that one too, over there. And then huge mirrors on the side of the van because it is quite a big rig. It has a really good turning circle, but it is quite a big rig.